Comparing Mercedes six cylinder and eight cylinder engines. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Best Mercedes channel on the web, I think. Um, today we're gonna compare the reliability and serviceability of Mercedes six cylinder engines and Mercedes eight cylinder engines. And we're going to talk about how the, um, these are specifically gas motors that we're gonna talk about in this video. And we're gonna talk about some of the difficulties of servicing the six cylinder engines and some of the difficulties of servicing the eight cylinder engine, some of, some of the advantages to either one or disadvantages of, of either one so that we can sort of get a picture of which engine is more serviceable or livable. Um, hang on, I have to reposition my mic. Oh, it's upside down. Okay, all right. So the predominant Mercedes six cylinder engines that I'm thinking of are the M180, which was used from 1952 to 1969 in the US market and 1976 in the rest of the world. The M127, the M129, and the M130. If you don't know what these engines are, they were the fuel injected engines used in cars like the 220SE, 230SL, 250SL, 250SE, um, and the uh, carbureted 280S, um, 250-8 sedan, fuel injected in the 280SE, and the, um, uh, the uh, 280 SL, of course. And then the V8 engines we're going to look at are quite simple. The M100, the 6.3 liter V8, and 6.9 liter V8s. The M116, which was the 3.5, 3.8, and 4.2 liter V8. And the M117, which was the 4.5, 5.0, and 5.6 liter V8. So in the first part of this video, we're going to talk about some of the service difficulties of the uh, six-cylinder Mercedes engines. My biggest complaint about Mercedes six cylinder engines from this era were that they had a propensity to need cylinder head work, which automatically puts you at a huge disadvantage if you're trying to rehab one and it needs valve guides and a head gasket and some deck welding. They have a propensity to need um, uh, other difficult services such as changing belts. There, there's very little room to do a belt service on these cars once they have accessories like AC, power steering, and a smog pump. And of course, they tend to do some weird things. They always run hot. They pretty much love expensive gas. They don't like cheap gas. They have to have expensive gas because they are so highly tuned. And they are busy at highway speeds. And probably the worst thing about them is that they're very thirsty. A good Mercedes, like a... A Mercedes 280SE with a 3.27 to 1 rear axle, which is an axle that you have to install from a 280SE 4.5 and not, not an axle that came in the car as a standard, will get about 18 miles per gallon. If you have a really finely tuned 250SE or something, you might see 20 miles per gallon, maybe if you drive conservatively. But these engines were typically like teens for miles per gallon. They were not economy engines by any stretch at all. In fact, they were quite the opposite. They were gas guzzlers. And um, I, I remember quite clearly that my 280 SE 4.5 would get about the same fuel economy as like a 250C, even though the 280 SE 4.5 is a much faster, nicer car to drive. So those are the disadvantages of the six cylinder engines. Now, here are the things I like about the six cylinder engines. First of all, once you have everything set up right, they're, they're pretty reliable. Um, they are easy to get parts for. Mercedes carries most parts for these things. They're relatively easy to tune. And once they're tuned right, they stay in tune for a long time unless you don't know what you're doing. Um, they do a pretty good job of moving some pretty big heavy cars, especially the M130 fuel injected engine. Once that engine is set up properly, it's not only dead reliable, but it, you know, it just sort of 
it just has this really wonderful feel where it feels robust and strong and capable. So these are good engines. You know, I can't say much about changing belts on something like a 280SL. It's no fun. Doing valve adjustments, also no fun. But the end result is a lot of fun. They're, you know, and, and, and again, when you get them right and you maintain them right, they stay right. Now, on the other side, some disadvantages of the Mercedes V8 engines are that the fuel injection systems on the 3.5 and 4.5 DJetronic engines can be pretty complicated to get set up right. Number two, a lot of them were not maintained well, so when it's time, they need timing chains, rocker arms, regular valve adjustments. Occasionally, they need valve jobs too. Both of my 3.5 and 4.5 V8s had valve jobs, and one of them, because of cylinder head corrosion, had to have a replacement head installed. Uh, another major frustrating thing about these engines is that if you want to do anything like change an exhaust gasket, you have to basically drop the front subframe to get to it. Um, so all in all, these are not fun, service friendly, easy to work on engines, but they're a little easier than the six cylinder engines because everything is right up on the top and, and you can get to belts easily because they're shorter. You can get to spark plugs more easily on a six cylinder, but on the V8s they're really not that bad if you have the right swivel wrench. Um, but I'd still say the V8's easier to service and, and yields like sort of a higher return on your investment. And that's why these engines went on to power so many S-Class cars and so many SLs because the, the value for the money was better. Now, another engine that I haven't talked about yet was the is the M110. The M110 was, a great engine in European trim and US trim it I'm not saying it was unreliable I'm not saying you should exchange it for another engine because you shouldn't but there's some work you have to do to really make a US version M110 do what it's supposed to do especially if you have a carbureted car and it's got a huge thermal reactor when the M110 engine came out I found it did three things better than the old Mercedes six-cylinder engines one, if you maintained them well, they could sustain high RPMs much better because they didn't have a reverse flow head and they had a cross flow head and double overhead cams. The engines breathe extremely well at 4,000 RPM. The six cylinder Mercedes engines are okay at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 RPM, but you really have to push them. The M110, no problem. It'll rev all day. It's comfortable doing it. So for that reason, I do like the M110 engine. The valves in the M110 engine, because they are offset at an angle, I would say they are a little easier to adjust with the right tooling, but they're not a walk in the park either. Um, the brakes on an M110, uh, not the brakes, sorry. The vacuum pump on the M110 engine, which supplies the brake booster, can be a little bit difficult to rebuild. You know, but... For the most part, my only complaints about the M110 engine are what happens if a head gasket goes because it's a pain in the butt to take apart, which thankfully is not that often. And what do you do when you have to change belts? They're a pain to get to unless you have uh, a 126S class. Otherwise, they're just a real tight fit with no, almost no room. But they don't have some of the hot running issues that the earlier six cylinders did when they have AC strapped to them. So for that reason, I do like the M110. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick comparison. We'll talk about um, some of the other uh, issues with these engines and, and serviceability and access points later on so that you can decide which kind of classic Mercedes is right for you. In the meantime, please like, share, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications. And if you check out the next video, we'll be talking about the M103 and M104 engines versus the M119 engines and late M117 engines. Thanks.